Are these characters still good? We're halfway into phase 8th year of the game, and to be honest with you, the game looks completely different from just 6 months ago back when Book 8 first started. After the midpoint banner came out, I was wondering, what's the best banner of Book 8 so far? So I ranked every single banner in Book 8, starting from the beginning to the midpoint to see how well these units have aged, which units are irrelevant, and if today, any of them are truly worth your precious, precious orbs. I'm looking at which meta-impactful banners, units, and skills would give you value against the meta both today and most importantly in the potential far future. Just because something is good today doesn't mean they'll be good tomorrow and vice versa. So you'll see me rank things higher or lower based on how well I think they'll age in the long run. Speaking of which, hitting that subscribe button is really good in today's meta. And if you're enjoying the video so far, you can subscribe so you don't miss future videos. I'm not looking for anything that has fallen out of the meta today or something I wouldn't really use even on release. Speaking of something I wouldn't really use even on release, we have the Rearmed Reinhardt banner. I know it's sad to say that the Thracia banner is the worst banner in all of Book 8, so I wanted to say sorry to the Thracia fans. Uh, both of you. But I remember thinking this banner sucked when I first saw the trailer, and to this day, I'm even more convinced that this is one of the worst banners of the year. Tina was always theorized to be really good because of her ability to steal bonus effects, but no one has her or cares enough to summon for her. And to make things even worse, now that we have Nurgle, no one will ever care about Tina because he's better than her in basically every single possible way. Safi is yet another irrelevant colorless unit, and the quote-unquote star of the banner is Rearmed Reinhardt, a unit with a worse brave condition than his base version from 7 years ago, and they made him a ranged nuke, but he's a worse ranged nuke than Winter Yunaka, who they sold to us just a month before him. And to be honest, the only thing getting nuked here was the normal 5-star pool, because now we have two more irrelevant units in colorless that I absolutely do not want at all. It was at this point I had to ask, why would I summon on this banner? Tina introduced Wrathful Tempo, but I struggled to care about the skill when I struggled to care about staff units in general. Reinhardt isn't a good ranged nuke at all, he's not even the best rearmed ranged cav, and he's one of the most underwhelming rearmed units ever made. And I don't even want Far Trace 4 from him when it's not only on Fallen Ursula and Attuned Ivy, but you were basically never running the skill when B slots are so competitive. And now, you are most definitely never ever running the skill when you can just run Far Trace Echo. This has to be one of the worst banners in all of Book 8. The skills are not worth caring about, the units can't age well if they were never good to begin with, and all of these units just cannot do anything and they will die to everything. Then we have the Legendary Camilla banner. I think the meta will eventually reach a point where no one really needs a Legendary Camilla. I wasn't that crazy about her even when she came out, which was definitely one of my hottest takes at the time, yet it also ended up being one of my best aging takes, because nowadays there's no way I would call her the best water legendary. As a unit, she's best known for two things, her DR piercing support and her pre-combat damage, but now that we have Divine Water, Yukimura, and just so many units that come with DR piercing, her support went from a must-run effect to just nice to have, but it'll slowly become irrelevant in an age where the teams you're running don't need DR piercing support because they can already pierce DR on their own. I understand there's value in stacking DR piercing, but as team slots become more and more competitive, and as they make more broken units will want to run instead, it becomes really hard to justify Camilla only for her support. So then, she's reduced to a flying mage nuke with her pre-combat damage, which sucks for her when she's one of the units who got nerfed the hardest as soon as Breath of Life 4 got introduced. So if her support isn't good and her combat isn't good, why would I want Legendary Camilla? I will say that as a unit, she's unusually flexible and she's actually a little bit better in practice than in theory, but I highly doubt she's getting any better assuming Breath of Life 4 becomes common and she'll quickly have one of the biggest falloffs of a legendary we've ever seen in this game. She's only this high because she's a legendary, and she just has the ability to be run in arena, but I almost put her below even the Thracia banner, because I can't even say her fodder is good when you can not only get Deadly Miasma from Attuned Ivy, a unit who is sparkable, but having good fodder on the base kit of an Attuned unit is the best possible scenario you could ask for if you're using Ivy as a skill factory. Ultimately, as Camilla's combat gets worse, and as Camilla's support becomes irrelevant, there's really no reason to summon for her. 
nobody in the meta would notice if the Thracia banner was never made, and other than the Thracia fans, nobody on this earth would notice either. And while Camilla is one of the most meta impactful units they've released so far, I suspect her rise will be just as quick as her fall, and I can't put these banners any higher than D tier. Then we have the thick, uh, I, I mean, mythic Loki banner. A banner so underwhelming, she dethroned legendary Xander as one of the worst performing banners ever released. She introduced Dazzling Discord, a nice B skill for staff units, I guess, but I struggle to care about the skill when I struggle to care about staff units in general, and I'm starting to get deja vu from two other irrelevant staff units. And also, I actually hate that her preference skill is in her C slot, which is the last thing you'd want if you're a flyer, meaning you can't run Guidance, Crux, Miasma, or any of the other things that make flyers really good, and she'll forever be one of the few flyers that can't run Soaring Echo or any Echo skills at all, unless you want to take away the one thing that makes her unique. I will say that she herself is a pretty good unit, and she's part of the reason why the meta is shifting away from visible bonus effects now, and it's also why Rez is such an important stat. You'll probably get more value from having her than anyone else on the Thracia banner, although it's not a high bar to clear, and Loki's really only here because she's a mythic. She's just pretty good at best, but I really don't care much about her. And while she might be the best dark mythic, that's also not a high bar to clear, and I'm pretty happy putting this banner right here. Then we have the Rearmed Lucina and Mythic Granitosker banner. I know this banner looks really good on paper, but I'd argue it's showing its age just six months later. Severa is yet another god sword in a long line of infantry swords that cannot do anything and will die to everything. It's clear that the real stars of the banner are the rearmed and mythic units, but I'd argue you really only care about Lucina because I'm not that crazy on Ratatosker. She was the first modern quote-unquote thing to stop warping ever since we got Gatekeeper, but I never really liked how she had to take an entire action just to get her Divine Vein up. And nowadays, you'll never want to bust out Ratatosker when we have better options like Valentine's Mur or High Dragon Wall. She is a good astromythic, but I wouldn't call her the best one, and I care even less about her introducing beast agility because beast units suck in general. On the other hand, Rearm Lucina is one of the best rearm units ever made. She redefined the power levels we can expect from rearm units because her combat is surprisingly good when she comes with an amazing preference special. But she's not the best rearm unit when she's quickly getting outclassed as a melee cav, and in fact, I wouldn't even call her the best candidate for a melee cav skill factory, since I'd much rather have a tuned Azura. And if I wanted a unit with good action economy, I'd rather run Duo Robin. She is still quite good, and that's why I put this banner above Loki, Camilla, and the Thracia one. Having an offensive mythic and a good rearmed unit makes this banner a pretty decent one, but I only see Lucina getting significantly worse, and we'll quickly see that there's much better banners that are worth your orbs. Then we have the Legendary Male Alir banner. I was pretty low on him when I ranked all of the Earth legendaries, but I've liked him more and more as time went on, and yet I'm still putting him this low because he's just in a very competitive archetype that not only faces strict competition today, but it's also one of the archetypes the most prone to aging, so I really can't see this guy aging well in the future. He's one of the most polarizing units to take out, because his miracle is super annoying to deal with, assuming he's got allies around him. And he got even better with the introduction of Breath of Life 4, meaning his miracle can proc more reliably. But he's polarizing because if you take out his allies, then he really isn't as crazy as someone like Emblem Ike. While Omni Tanks are doing relatively well for themselves now, I think we'll return back to a player phase meta eventually. Honestly, even though he's probably the second best Omni tank in the game, I just can't recommend him when you have better options you can run today, and you will definitely have better options you can run in the future. And it's a shame too, because Dragon's Roar could have been a meta impactful skill, but you will never see it because basically nobody summoned for him. This banner is only this high because I like Dragon's Roar as a skill, and as a unit, I like Alir more today than anyone else we've talked about so far, but in the future, I really don't think we'll be talking much about him, and that's why this banner is really not worth caring about. All of these banners are nice at best, but nothing here will really blow your mind. When we take a look at all the other banners we have coming up, you'll see why these banners should feel right at home in C tier. Then we have the legendary male Corrin banner. 
He's the second melee infantry omni tank we've talked about so far, and he won't be the last, but he's not as good as Emblem Ike, and to be honest, he never will be. I don't understand why we keep getting so many of these bulky units in Book 8, and it sucks for Male Corrin in particular, because as a unit, he's even worse than Male Alir, a unit he came out afterwards, and actually, he might be worse than nearly everyone we've talked about so far. I think he'll end up aging as one of the worst fire legendaries they've released in a while. His combat is bad, his support is bad, he cannot do anything, and he will die to everything. Male Corrin does have AoE damage reduction, so I almost put him higher because of that, but then they made Breath of Life 4, so who cares about AoE DR if you can just heal it back up no problem. He will technically age better than Male Alir because Corrin provides a bit of support, but it's really not a lot, and I hate that he has to enter combat to trigger his Divine Vein just like Rata Tosker, which is horrible for action economy, and otherwise, he's providing no unique support to the team. Speaking of things I hate, I don't care about his Divine Vein when I wasn't a fan of DR piercing support back when Legendary Camilla came out, and I'm certainly not a fan of it now because every unit worth caring about, and even units not worth caring about, come with some innate DR piercing nowadays, so I really don't need to outsource that. And it's to the point that I genuinely think the best thing about his support is the fact that it also happens to act as difficult terrain, which isn't saying much, and I really, really wanted to put this banner in D tier, but I just couldn't because of High Dragon Wall, a skill that I think genuinely elevates dragons into a better archetype, assuming warping remains prevalent. That's why I put him above male Alir, despite Corrin being way worse as a unit, and I think this banner deserves C tier because High Dragon Wall does so much more for dragons than Dragon's Roar did, since running them is now a viable option to stop warping. It doesn't stop the melee units from warping, which is unfortunate, but still, I wouldn't be surprised if this skill becomes one of the most important skills in all of Book 8. It's also the first ever 400 SPB skill, and it better be the last, but for all of those reasons, I just couldn't put this banner below Male Alir. But even though I think High Dragon Wall will be meta-defining, Corrin as a unit really isn't worth caring about, so I can't say his banner is better than the ones that I put after it. Then we have the Ascended Merrick and Atun Sita banner. Sita is the third melee infantry omni tank we've talked about so far, and she won't be the last, but she's not as good as Emblem Ike, and to be honest, she never will be. And if she wasn't an attuned unit, I would put her and this whole banner way lower. Uh, that being said, I actually like Sita more than you might think. Her kit is very synergistic and can give you legendary male Robin flashbacks with the amount of stats that she can get. But she's also very polarizing, because even though she has a lot of strong winning matchups, she really wanted things like NCD, and she loses more often than you would like for an Omni tank. Not to mention that she's still very prone to aging poorly and getting outclassed. Her best use case is really just giving out Guard Echo, a really good Echo skill and one of the better ones they've ever made, and she's by far the best skill factory for any melee infantry, so she brings a lot of value there. Not to mention that D Bonus Doubler is also quite a good skill, and makes you never want to run Prime ever again, which is both hilarious and also sad considering how broken Prime was just a few months ago. Other than Sita though, everyone else is really irrelevant. Arlen is just... Whatever, I really don't care about him, I only know his name because he comes with C bonus doubler, and now, I never need to know his name because I can get C bonus doubler from Nurgle. And then, Merrick is just a decent but not memorable range cav, or in other words, he is irrelevant, and in fact, he's just as irrelevant as the skill he introduced. And I put this banner here really only because of Atun Sita. She remains the best melee infantry skill factory, she's the only source of guard echo and D bonus doubler while also being a great unit, and you would get great value from her compared to everyone else we've talked about so far. But her performance will fall off, and considering everyone else here is irrelevant, I can't put this banner any higher. Also, not that this has any actual impact on where I ranked the banner, but with both Yulia and Arlen, the colorless pool is like even more bloated than before, and at this point, I think IS just hates all of us. Then we have the Attuned Azura banner, which was so underwhelming, her banner dethroned Xander and Loki as the worst performing banners ever released. And if I had a nickel for every time an Axe Calf from Fates was the worst performing banner in Fae, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Mozu is the fourth melee infantry omni tank we've talked about so far, and she won't be the last, but she's not as good as Emblem Ike, and to be honest, she never will be. 
I will say that Mozu isn't horrible, but it's really hard to care about yet another one of these. And spoiler alert, I like her less than Atu Nasida, who they made just a month before her. Yukimura is nice DR piercing support in the normal pool, but it's only 30%, and I've already talked about how much I don't care about outsourcing DR piercing. And for some reason, they made a new tier 4 B skill for dancers to use, but Cantrip might be the worst one they've made so far, and I vividly remember saying this to myself when I first saw the trailer. Who cares? I'm not even that crazy about Wings of Mercy Echo, if you weren't running it before. It's not gonna make you suddenly run it now, and it's very susceptible to aging when they will inevitably make more broken X skills you'll want to run instead of this. The only good thing here is really just Attuned Azura, and that's why I put this banner over High Dragon Wall and Attuned Sita. Dancers are arguably the best aging archetype in the entirety of Fae, and this Azura is one of just four cavalry dancers in the entire game, while also being the only one that's sparkable. And I actually like Azura's new dance, since extra movement is always nice, especially on melee calves. For my money, Attuned Azura is the best melee calf skill factory because she will always age well as a dancer, and she will presumably be the only way to get more copies of Wom Echo, assuming you still wanted it. But otherwise, this banner didn't introduce anything noteworthy, and it really only escaped C tier because Azura's just lucky she happens to be a good skill factory while also being one of the best aging archetypes in the entire game. Then we have the Christmas banner, one of the most noteworthy banners to come out in recent memory, and I know it's a hot take to put it this low when on release, this banner alone felt like Brave Hector levels of power creep with how much these units brought to the table. But it's so weird to think that nowadays, nobody here is really your top choice. Yunaka struggles in combat nowadays, meaning she can't even do her one role as a ranged nuke, although she remains the only source of Assassin's Strike, assuming you still want to run any pre-combat damage builds. Dimitri was already the quote-unquote worst unit on the banner at the time, which is hilarious because he was one of the best Omni tanks they ever made up to that point, but he came out right before they started a new Omni tank age, and just like Rada Tosker and Corrin, Dimitri has to enter combat to really get anything going, whereas the best units of today are good straight from the get-go. And while Edelgard's one of the best Gale Forcers in the game, it's never been easier to do Gale Force strategies. And even she is struggling to take out some units nowadays, which is just insane to think about, and that's actually why I think the most valuable unit on this banner is now Dual Violeth, which isn't saying much since save armors are struggling to survive nowadays. Saves in general are one of the quickest archetypes most prone to aging, and most importantly, they made an arguably better save than him just two months later with better roll compression. Still, I actually like Dual Byleth even today, because as a unit, he still leagues better than every other far saver not named Valentine's Murr, and I will say that at least the fodder on this banner is somewhat interesting. Armored Blaze is nice, but there's a reason why we value far saves more than near saves, and no quarter is quite nice, but it's been on other units too, not to mention that you can get it from the codes, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see no quarter appear on a normal pool unit eventually. While on release, this might have been one of the most powerful banners ever made. Everyone is already showing their age less than a year later. This banner is only really this high because none of them are outright useless. You'll still find great uses on some of their fodder, and you'll probably get more mileage from this banner than anything we've talked about so far. But I really can't put it any higher when you have better Omni tanks, better ranged nukes, and better safe armors. Then we have the Bridal Banner. A banner which is down here not because the units are bad, but more so because nothing here was really meta-breaking. The fodder here was really just whatever. Uh, Beast Assault 4 isn't bad, but beast units still suck, and if you needed to sacrifice your B skill just to get DR piercing, you probably weren't a good unit to begin with. Excel is a very nice upgrade, but it doesn't break the meta on the level of something like Flared Sparrow. And Flow Guard is... Uh, actually, it's just really good, I like it. And speaking of things I like, Bride Emblem makes Valoria completely irrelevant and she's amazing special cooldown support while also having her signature undefended status. But I still find Beasts to be very awkward in the meta and you might have trouble justifying her when team slots are so competitive. Lapis is just funny more than anything because her effect, shared spoils, only happens when your opponent survives, which is the exact opposite of what you like to happen when you enter a round of combat. And lastly, Duo Sharina is very good, and you could even call her top tier, but she doesn't influence or impact the meta in any particular way. 
while she's good in Pathfinder teams as one of just four melee calves with permanent extra movement. There's no shortage of options to run in Pathfinder strategies anyway, and beyond just having a bunch of actions, her combat isn't really anything that noteworthy. And speaking of which, like I said with Winter Edelgard, she's an amazing Gale Forcer if not the very best at it, but I value that less in an age where Gale Force has never been easier. In the long run, Sharina's combat will eventually fall off, and her ability to have so many actions will also become less and less relevant when she cannot do anything with those actions while also dying to everything. If anything, I think Embla is weirdly the best aging unit on this banner for her special cooldown support. I think she has great synergy with AoEs since you can help charge your team's special and then disable the far savior that would have protected your enemies against it. Both her and Sharina are amazing units. They're better than the sea of Omni tanks that are worse than Emblem Ike, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but they're probably more useful in the long run than anyone on the Three Houses Christmas banner. But nothing here really influenced the meta, and it especially doesn't break it either. So that's why I can't put this banner any higher. Also, I said Emblem was good because AoEs were good, but then they made Breath of Life 4. So like, yet another reason why this banner stays in C tier. Then we have the New Year's banner. To be honest, I actually had a really hard time ranking this one because most of the banner sucks. Nerthuz is not good whether or not she's a mythic on the beach or in a kimono, Kvasir is not good whether she's a mythic or she's in a kimono, and attack speed wild is such a whatever skill, and the only thing that's wild here is why IS can't make beast units actually good. Really, the only good thing here is duo Sather. Even though Duel Leon is much better at making your opponent uninstall this game, she's still an amazing unit. She can give out the Timesgate warping to her and her team, and oh yeah, she can inflict the most broken and stupid effect in the entire game, just turning off the actions of your opponent. With a unit this good, there's no way I could put her below even the Bridal Banner when Sather has such a high performance ceiling. But that being said, she does require a bit of setup, like she can't get everything off until turn 2 unless she uses her dual button. And she also suffers from the same problem Loki does since they both have their preference skill in their C slot, meaning they can't run any good echo skills or guidance support. Although it matters less for Sather since she can still give out warping from Times Gate. Ultimately, she isn't horrible, she's quite good and arguably a great option for her ability to shut off actions, and I don't think a unit who can do that will truly be bad. But you might want to choose other units over her that are better flyers, better as a support, or better at shutting off actions. She's a unit who's situationally good in a game where they're selling us units that are good in every situation. And considering there's nothing else noteworthy about this banner, there really isn't much value here and I can't put it any higher. Then we have the Easter banner, or what I like to call it, the Duo Chloe and Spring Mirabilis banner. Fram is decent, she's only notable for introducing Firestorm Boost, an unusually good A skill that you might want to give to your skill factory which is why Fram is even more irrelevant since it's also on a tuned Azura. And like I said with Camilla and Ivy, I'd much rather summon for more Azuras than Frams. Sylvain is just another source of no quarter while also introducing Near Trace 4, but if you needed to sacrifice your B skill just to have Kanto, you probably weren't a good unit to begin with. And the real stars of the banner are a demote dancer so good that I don't know why they made her a demote, and a duo unit who puts legendary Hinoka to shame and gives out charge to everyone like it's free money. In my mind, Dual Chloe single-handedly made Assault Troop and Rion Plumeria's dance just irrelevant, and we've already seen how ridiculous Legendary Hinoka was, since she ruled all of Book 7. And even though charge support isn't as crazy as it once was, I just think there's no way you could call Dual Chloe bad, since she's also a ranged flyer, an amazing archetype to be in, while also having no preference skill, meaning you can just slap any broken Echo skill on her like Soaring Echo or whatever they make in the future. However, her combat really isn't the best, and it's why people call her a side grade to Legendary Hinoka instead of a straight upgrade. And I'll admit that how much you value Duo Chloe and her support will depend on how common anti-warping becomes with things like High Dragon Wall. I wouldn't disagree with putting this banner even lower because charge support is already competing against Pathfinder strategies, extra movement, and guidance support. Not to mention that if you really wanted Crux, you should probably get Crux from Atun Makaya. Still, I like this banner considerably more than all the other ones we've talked about so far. 
I like Dual Chloe even more than Dual Sather because I think Chloe's support is that much more applicable than Dual Sather's and it makes up for Chloe's lackluster combat. And with how weirdly good Mirablis is, I felt this banner barely earned the top of B tier but I wouldn't disagree with putting this banner lower or swapping it with the New Year's banner because this one is already looking like it might not age the best. All of these banners are pretty good, but they don't break the meta and compared to the insane thing they pumped out in other banners, you'll see why they belong right here in B tier. Then we have the Desert Banner. Altina is the 6th melee infantry omni tank we've talked about so far, but she's not as good as Emblem Ike and to be honest, she never will be. And even though she's really good, I don't think she's better than even legendary male Alir. And it's just a fact that she's in one of the worst archetypes most prone to aging and competition. Juno is irrelevant, and duo Igreen is one of the most important yet fluctuating duos we've seen in all of Book 8 so far. It's kind of funny that she was quite good when she came out, and she somehow got even better afterwards since she became the best counter to a unit you definitely know his name, Emblem Ike. But then Breath of Life 4 made both Ike better and AoEs worse, so I'd argue she's now worse than she was before. And how you feel about her will depend on how common you think Breath of Life 4 will be and how much you value AoEs. Igreen is probably the best AoE nuker in the entire game. She pulses down her own special while having speed based true damage even with AoEs and then she's also an amazing support because she not only gives out the status to bypass difficult terrain, meaning she's better than Desert Lind will ever be but she also gives out extra movement to armors and infantries. And also, Pulse of Blades might be one of the best C skills ever made, and it sucks that you can only get it from Duo Agreen, and I hate that they made a skill so good stuck on a unit so good. In the end, I almost put this banner in S tier. I definitely like her and Pulse of Blades way more than Duo Sather, and if it weren't for Breath of Life 4, this banner would have easily made its way to the very top. But Igreen now feels like a dual Chloe who's better in combat, and that's why I wouldn't put it considerably higher over the Easter banner. And even though I just said a lot of great things about this duo, all the critiques I said about dual Chloe's support also apply to Igreen as well. And I truly think AoEs have never been nerfed harder than with Breath of Life 4. Even though this banner is great today, I really don't think this banner will be that useful in the future. And that's why I put this banner here. This banner is a great banner with some great units. But with the way the meta looks and how the meta will look at the potential far future, I can't put this banner any higher than A tier. In S tier, we have the Attuned Ivy and Rearmed Hortensia banner. With both Soaring Echo and Hortensia being on here, there's no way I could put this banner any lower than this. Hortensia is one of the best support units they've ever made. She heals, she gives Kanto, she can run any Echo skill, she can inflict Flash with Glitter of Light, a healer special that she also introduced, and for my money, it's probably the most powerful special healers can run. She inflicts Discord, Panic, I could go on, and I think she will remain one of the best supports for a very long time, because even if one of her support effects gets countered in the meta, she just does so much that she's still doing a million other useful things in her kit. And Attuned Ivy might be one of the best skill factory candidates for a ranged flyer. It's definitely either her or Micaiah, because every copy of Ivy you get is another copy of Soaring Echo, a skill which is pretty unanimously considered the best Echo skill they've ever made, and a skill so broken, I don't know how this is the same people that made Death Blow Echo. You could make an argument for Far Trace being better, but unless they start making more meta impactful units without Kanto, the same way they stopped giving null follow-up to some units, then I'd argue I would still prefer Soaring Echo when most meta units already come with Kanto. And I think Soaring Echo will remain an amazing Echo skill, even if High Dragon Wall or Anti warping becomes common, because I really can't think of any other current or future flyer skills that would make a bigger difference than Guidance Support. For how stupid Soaring Echo is, for how insane Hortensia is, and for how you would get immense value out of the both of them, I simply cannot put this banner any lower than S tier, and that's why I put this banner above the Desert and Easter banner. But it's also at the bottom of S tier because Rosado is just nice at best. Uh, he really doesn't do a whole lot, and Wyvern Flight isn't bad, but Beast Lots are so competitive. And finally, Book 8 introduced more broken things than just Soaring Echo and Hortensia. And I can't believe I just said that, but I can't put this banner any higher. Then we have the Fallen Banner. One that traditionally brings a lot of power creep, yet weirdly enough, there's a surprisingly high amount of things I actually don't like in here. Fallen Lumera is just decent, but I was never that crazy about her mythic version and there's nothing about her Fallen version that makes me love her either. 
I really see her as a divine stone bot, but since she has to enter combat, she's a bot who isn't good at being a bot, and that's why I don't really care about her. Then, Ursula is one of the best AoE nukers in the game, but she's not the best at it, and when even the best AoE nuker got nerfed in the meta, what does that say about Ursula? And the same critiques also apply to Verge of Death, a great skill she introduced for AoEs, which they sold to us right before they nerfed AoEs. So then Ursula is just reduced to a desperation support, but just like Duo Chloe, you'd rather have your units be both amazing in combat and as a support, just like Fallen Veil. Vale. And speaking of which, I actually like Fallen Veil vale quite a bit. She's the reason why I'm not fond of most infantry mages when they aren't anywhere near as good as her. And unlike Verge of Death, Crystalline Water is actually more useful for just AoEs, since nowadays, meeting your res checks have become so important because of stupid units like Fallen Veil. Vale. She's definitely one of the best infantry mages in the entire game, but she's probably not better than this insane monstrosity. He is so stupid and is most definitely the best unit on the banner, and his whole kit is designed around having and stealing as many bonus effects as possible, which he most definitely does when Essence Drain steals effects from not just his enemy, but it also steals from all foes within two spaces. And then he also doesn't have a preference skill, so just go ahead and slap any echo skill on him, he clearly needs it, and keep in mind, he will steal the effects even if he dies, meaning he's a more useful unit when he's dead than most units in this game when they're alive. Name literally any broken effect in this game, and if you are running it, Nurgle will steal it. I said before how I didn't like having to enter combat just to support your team, but considering he doesn't even have to survive to steal anything, I don't care. And I know that he isn't that different from insane player phase nukes, but he provides a level of support that is so crazy to even think about until you see it in real time. This banner is really only this high because of Nurgle. He's probably the most insane unit we've talked about so far, and he's more insane than Dual Eye Green and Rearm Hortensia. But I can't believe I'm saying this, he really won't age as well or isn't as insane as the things we'll see on the banners I put above this one. So that's why I put this banner here. These banners are amazing. They're at the absolute top of the meta, and it's no surprise they go straight into S tier. But what could possibly be better than being at the top of the meta, you might ask? Carving it in your own image. These five banners are the cream of the crop, and for better or for worse, this is what we have to deal with in our Fire Emblem Heroes game. I present to you the top five banners in all of Book 8. In S plus tier, we have the Emblem Marth and Mythic Lumera banner. I know it's insane to put their banner this high, when both Marth and Lumera are worse than everyone else in S and A tier. So let me be clear, this banner is not here because of Marth, Lumera, or the skills. Especially when Marth is an infantry sword, and there's no archetype more prone to being outclassed than melee infantries, and he introduced Potent, but it's not a meta-breaking effect. And you'll never want to run it when you can run Lagoo's friend instead. And Lumera puts me to sleep because I don't like her Fallen version and I don't like this one either. So don't get me wrong, I had this banner way lower for the longest time, but I just couldn't put this banner any lower because of how insane it is that Marth's emblem effect permanently reduces a unit's special cooldown. I genuinely think this is not only one of the best effects in the game, but it will remain one of the best support effects ever made until Fae dies simply because of how this game functions and how important specials are. Even with crazy stupid things like Dual Eye Green, Soaring Echo, Hortensia, and Nurgle, they will always sell us some way to counter them, and every unit eventually falls off. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't talk about Nurgle a year from now, just like how we don't talk about Fallen Maria a year later. But I truly think that we will be telling people to equip the Marth Emblem Ring a year from now, if not even longer than that because that's how universally useful slaying is. The only way I can see people not wanting to run Marth's Emblem Ring is if they made so many more broken emblem effects in the future to the point that even permanent slaying is considered suboptimal, and I really, really hope it doesn't come to that. But with how resilient to aging Marth's Emblem effect is, I truly think that having an Emblem Marth might be one of the best uses and best aging uses of your orbs in this entire game. Then in fourth place, we have... Okay, hear me out. If it wasn't for Breath of Life 4, this banner is easily the most meta-impactful banner in all of Book 8 at its peak. But to be honest, we all knew pre-combat damage was going to be countered eventually. Valentine Stalina had one of the best weapons in the game before Breath of Life 4 came along, yet now that pre-combat damage isn't as effective, the weapon doesn't really have a lot going for it, and I feel similarly about Valentine's Ephraim. 
who's a good near saver, but we value far saves more than near saves. Speaking of which, one of the biggest reasons why this banner is considered so insane is because of Valentine's Murph. She's arguably the best far save in the game, both because of her combat and her role compression when she gives out Warp Bubble to her and her teammate. This is insane when she's one of the few ways to stop both melee units and ranged units from warping. But that being said, she isn't as novel anymore now that dragons can run high dragon wall, and I suspect that dragons will actually see a lot more usage because of it. And the moment they make a better far saver, which they do very often in the span of like less than 6 months, the day will come where you might not want to run Valentine's Myrrh. I would have ranked this banner way higher if it weren't for Duel Leon, and where you put this banner will depend on how much you value him in an age where Breath of Life 4 is so common. Duel Leon is a menace on the level of Emma Mike, and he's definitely one of the most broken units they've ever made, since nobody is better at shutting off actions than Duel Leon, both with his base kit and his dual button, which is one of the most egregious things that we've ever seen in this game. But in my mind, Breath of Life 4 knocked him down considerably, and will reach a point where Leon will struggle to take out his enemies, given how much he relied on pre-combat damage. In the future, I think we'll see him similar to how we see Duel Sather, a unit who's just situationally useful with a high ceiling. But just like Duel Chloe, you want your units to be both amazing in combat and as a support. It was really hard to sort out the top 4 banners, so I wouldn't disagree with putting this banner a bit higher, because with how insane this banner is, I felt it was reasonable to put it over Marth and even the Fallen banner. But I actually think everyone here will age worse than Marth's emblem effect and maybe even Nurgle, and the nerfs to pre-combat damage and the introduction of High Dragon Wall is why I can't call this a top 3 banner of Book 8, especially when we're trying to look to the future. But considering it has the best far save in the game currently, and the ability to end your opponent's actions, that's why I think it deserves a spot in S plus tier. In third place, we have the Emblem Ike Banner. If this was purely a ranking of how meta impactful units are today, there's no doubt that Ike is number one. This is the part where I explain what he can do, but it's actually easier for me to explain what he can't do because the answer is, I, I don't know. Ike can do everything. He's good on offense, defense, arena, SD, ether raids, as an emblem ring, he's even good as a frickin' combat manual because Lagu's friend is just so broken. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but he somehow got even better now that Breath of Life 4 is here. Meaning AoEs, one of the few things that could take him out reliably, doesn't even work on him anymore. So now, like 99% of the units in this game can't take out the guy, and it's to the point that your counter to Emblem Ike needs to be more specific than the nuclear codes hidden by the president, and at this point, now you can't counter all the other meta-breaking units not named Emblem Ike. I know a day will come where he will eventually be bad, but even so, you can still use his Emblem Ring effect in the long run, so he's an amazing unit very much worth your orbs. And it's hilarious to think that Ike single-handedly ruined every other infantry sword or omni-tank in the game. Because if people can take out your emblem Ike, then they most certainly can take out every other omni-tank in the game. Ike isn't just at the top of the meta. He broke it. He defined it. He is it. He is the meta. And I haven't even begun to talk about Lagu's friend, a skill which straight up might be the best skill in the game, but let's just say that Lagu's friend, Emblem Ike as a unit, and Ike's emblem effect being useful long after Ike will be power crept means there's no doubt Ike's banner earns a spot in S plus tier. He's more impactful than Emblem Marth. He's more versatile than Dual Leon while being just as stupid, and he's certainly the best unit we've talked about so far. But as crazy as it sounds, there's two banners I like even more than Ike, and that's why I put this banner here. In second place, we have the Young Banner, or what I like to call it, the Duo Robin Banner. I know it's crazy to put this banner above Emblem Ike, and I don't blame you for thinking that. Who cares about Lissa when she's a worse melee infantry than Ike on his bathroom break? And Male Robin is a ranged infantry who's worse than Nurgle, Vale, and Ike Green. But I put this banner this high because of both Young Emerin and how insane Duo Robin is. Emerin is one of the few staff units I actually care about because she is a ridiculous beacon of warping for your teammates unlike anything else in this game, which has amazing synergy with the healing assist she introduced, Magic Shield. Which is not only the highest scoring healing assist, but it's by far the best one because it lets you act again. And then we get to Duel Robin, which is easily one of the best duel units ever made, and she will remain that for a very, very long time. 
Duo Robin is the modern day Valentine's Crom, except she's even better than him because she's a way better support. She's a way better nuke. Her amazing support effects aren't just tied to reposition, and also, she doesn't need to even do anything because other units can do assists on her, and she'll still give off Hush Spectrum and get another action. And also, she doesn't inflict isolation on herself and her ally. Like, Duo Crom was amazing. And that's just him being forced to do reposition. He can only get special cooldown, and that was through turns 1 through 4. Whereas Duo Robin can do any assist, she gets special cooldown, stats, null guard, DR, then she gives Hush Spectrum, which is just unconditional scowl, debuffs, special jumping, then she gets stats, true damage, DR piercing, 7 HP healing, she neutralizes your bonuses. Like, not only is Duo Robin top tier, but she's the most versatile unit we've talked about so far. She may be the most versatile unit in all of Book 8, and she might be the most versatile unit ever made. She did get hurt a bit with Atun Makaya, since Hush Spectrum is one of the highest priority statuses to be cleansed, but even so, I think Dual Robin is a strong contender for the best aging unit in all of Book 8. I think she will age even better than Emblem Ike, and that's the reason why this banner is here. I like her more than all of the Valentine's banner and even units like Fallen Veil vale and Nurgle. Because having young Emrin while also having the unit with the most resilience to aging, while also being one of the most meta units all year, makes this one of the best banners in all of Book 8. But it's not the best banner in all of Book 8. The best banner isn't Emblem Marth, it's not the Valentine's banner, it's not Emblem Ike, and it's not the young banner. The best banner in all of Book 8 is... The Rearm Soth and Atun Makaya banner. The fact that I've talked about Breath of Life 4 multiple times before even getting here is living proof of just how meta impactful the skill is, and I'm glad it's on some loser that I have no issues with Vaudern, because he can join the ocean of melee infantries that cannot do anything and will die to everything. And speaking of things I don't care about, I'm not that crazy on Rearm Soth. His weapon isn't that good since they knew it was going to be inheritable, and even though I like his special, I just can't call him a top tier unit. Unlike Attuned Makaya, who I would have already ranked pretty high with Fartrace Echo, until you realize she's straight up one of the best units ever made. She's on the level of Dual Leon and Emblem Ike, except she'll age even better than them because her support is just ridiculous. And in fact, it's so ridiculous and stupid that even the devs didn't understand it because they couldn't even translate it properly. She has Guidance 5 support built right into her weapon, meaning her C skill is free, and I'm getting flashbacks to Legendary Alencia when she warps not just infantries, but flyers, calves, and armors. And speaking of calves and armors, she's effective against calves and armors because why not? She has slang because why not? She heals 10 HP to her and her team because I guess she wasn't good enough without it. She converts penalties into bonuses to her and her team because why stop at healing? And as some sick joke by the developers, she becomes Freyer Jr. when she cleanses negative status effects to her and her team. She debuffs her enemy because IS hates all of us. She inflicts penalties which scales off of her res, and of course she has good res. She neutralizes bonuses to attack and res because I don't even know why. She deals true damage because she feels like it. She inflicts discord and exposure while exposing how much this game sucks. She has a splashing omni chill effect. She reduces your stats by a million when it counts the debuffs inflicted on you and your allies, and she comes with DR piercing because of course she does. What even is this unit? I would call Breath of Life 4 just as impactful as Lagoo's friend, if not more so. And in the long run, I think Makaya is more insane than slaying from Marth. She's already better than Dual Leon, she's more insane than Emblem Ike, and I can't believe I just said that, and she's also a better support than Duo Robin. It's so weird to put this banner this high when I don't care about that other dude. I'm not that crazy on Soth, and Edward is so irrelevant that you will never ever see him, but with how meta impactful Breath of Life 4 is, and with how stupid Micaiah is, I simply cannot put this banner anywhere else but here as the best banner in all of Book 8. Combined with the fact that Breath of Life 4 is one of the most meta-impactful skills ever made, and how Atun Micaiah is one of, if not the strongest unit in all of Book 8, that's why the Rearmed Soth and Atun Micaiah banner stands on top as the best banner in Book 8. Mainly for Micaiah, because Soth isn't a bad rearmed unit, but he's not as good as this one rearmed unit I talked about in my rearmed unit tier list. Check it out if you want to hear my thoughts on them. If you made it to the end and somehow you're not subscribed yet, then subscribe so you don't miss future uploads, and I'll see you again real soon.